Now there's a lot of electronic power steering systems that you can install on a DSM. One of the biggest ones that people I see do are from an MR2 that uses hydraulic fluid, kind of like the stock power steering system, and it runs power steering lines to the rack and pinion that's in back. However, with this setup, I don't want to put any hydraulic fluids in this vehicle whatsoever. I want it to be 100% electric power steering. And there's only one system that I know of that works extremely well, and we're going to be installing it in a couple series on this car. So here's part one of installing an electric power steering system from a 2009 Toyota Prius in your 1997 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX. All right, you guys, so we're gonna start off by actually opening the box. Now, I bought it from eBay, and it was kind of like a used model. Now, we're gonna go over exactly what's inside it, what you're gonna need, and just kind of the breakdown of what this system actually does. So this is pretty much the entire system and honestly this is pretty much what you're going to need. This is why this is one of the most easiest systems to install because it's super super easy and it's not complicated whatsoever. This system consists of the actual steering column which is what we're going to be replacing with and we're going to have to do some pretty significant modifications to make this fit just because that this shaft and this shaft does not fit the factory DSM. That's okay. Another thing is the, the mounting does not fit as well. It also comes with its own ECU, which there's a lot of electrical power steering systems out there. The reason why a lot of people use the Toyota Prius system is because it's super, super easy and not complicated. For example, in order for this module to work, it requires an eight gauge ground wire and eight gauge power supply. That's it for that. Next, it requires a keyed on 12 volt power supply, the black wire coming off of this terminal. That's it, you guys. That is literally it in order to install this. Obviously, this gets plugged into here, and then this system gets plugged into here. And that's it. It is literally three wires, and that is all it takes to get this system working. There's no hydraulics, nothing. It's all electrical powered by a motor. Next up, if you guys can find an actual steering column assembly that has the factory slip yoke from the Toyota Prius, it is definitely gonna help in order for you to cut and weld the old one to weld onto this one. So we kind of have the entire system kind of mocked up right now. I have it going to a 12 volt and a power supply. Like I said, this is the ground wire and this wire gets positive and this little small black wire gets positive. That's it guys, that's all you need for the system. Now how the system works is when pressure is applied on the input side of this steering system is what I'm doing here, this is where the steering wheel is gonna be. When you apply pressure, depending on how much torque you put on this shaft, is this module is gonna see how much torque you're putting on inside here because there's a torque sensor. It's gonna send that information to this ECU which is then gonna calculate the amount of torque that it needs to exert on this little output shaft. So so just by holding this with my hand and using just one finger, I can push and no matter how hard I try, just my one finger will overpower this by tenfold. It doesn't use a steering angle sensor like most electronic power steering systems. It just uses an input torque sensor and that's it. That's what makes this system amazing and that's why we're, we're going to be installing it into this GSX. As you can see, this thing is torquey as heck, and it's gonna be awesome. It's so cool. Now, the actual price that I paid for this thing on eBay was about $240. Now, I know you can find a lot more cheaper, but honestly, if you can find a complete system, it makes the install so much easier. So now that we went over the entire system on what you need, how much it costs, and how we're gonna wire it up, now we can actually start working on the vehicle. Obviously, step one is to actually take off the steering wheel. Now, you guys haven't had a really good chance to kind of look inside my interior, but as you can kind of see, I have a lot of carbon fiber. I really love carbon a lot, but we're, what we're going to be focusing on is everything down here. First step is to take off the under bezel, so let's start on that.
So now that we took off the lower bolster, we went ahead and took off the steering wheel trim that was around here that's held in with about two or three Phillips screws. Next, we're gonna be removing the connectors that are behind the steering wheel. Now, mine's a lot different than your guys's because I have rolling anti-lag that's activated by my wiper switch, which are these couple wires here. Now, in the next couple of uploads, I'm gonna be going over exactly how I wired up my rolling anti-lag, which is this. <laughs> Super fun, you guys. Super dangerous, but that's a whole different video, and I'll explain it to you after this is all finished and done. So what you guys are really trying to focus on is just try to take out the entire column. Obviously, we have to take this off in order to actually make this thing work. And for the most part, just start disconnecting everything that you see that's connected to the entire column. Now, obviously, make sure that you take pictures, maybe even make some markings on what goes where, because you do have about one, two, three, four, five connectors that are might gonna get a little bit confusing later on. There is two, four, six bolts holding on this column. So here's both columns. This is the stock 2G DSM column. This is the Toyota Prius. As you can tell, just by looking at it, it is way shorter, but that's no big deal. For the most part, we want to start off taking all this assembly because this half portion is what we want to keep because obviously we want to retain our wiper switch. We've got to have a rolling anti-lag. We've got to have our turn signals. And of course, we have to keep our steering wheel. Now, so what we're going to do is kind of disconnect all this stuff here, start disassembling everything. And of course, we've got to keep our ignition switch. So you guys have a general idea of what we're doing. We're gonna be using the upper portion of the column because it, it holds all our factory miscellaneous parts. Now, as far as the lower part, that's the part we're gonna try and take off and we're gonna try and connect the lower portion of this power steering system from the Prius, pretty much this lower piece to this upper piece. And obviously making a custom slip yoke that would actually work that bolts to the bottom. Now speaking of that guy, we are gonna to have to take the bottom slip yoke off, which is this guy here. Now there was four bolts holding it on to the firewall. Now if we go to the engine bay, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt on that side that's gonna be super difficult to get to. So if you guys pop open your engine bay on the very back side of the firewall, which honestly, it's gonna be super difficult to see. If you look way back in here, you're gonna see the steering rack and you're gonna see the slip yoke that's connected. Now you're gonna see a 10 millimeter bolt which is right in the center of the screen. You're gonna to wanna to take that off. After you take it off, the whole slip yoke should just slide out from that way. Pain in the butt, but we gotta do it. So if you guys have been doing a good job so far, this is pretty much what you're left with right now. Now we have two slip yokes, two steering shafts, and the factory DSM steering shaft has been somewhat disassembled. We went ahead and took off the multifunction switch, the turn signal switch, all that good stuff, and even this little guy. I'm not too sure what this is called, but this is pretty much what we're left with. So pretty much the next step is to actually take out the main steering shaft of this because we're going to be modifying this shaft. Now in the very front there is a snap ring that's way up inside here. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that. If not, but there's a little snap ring that you guys got to that you that you take off. The stock 2G DSM has a locking steering column. So guess what? You got to put the key in. Okay, turn it to the on position. Obviously now you can turn it, and now super easy. You could just pull it right out, literally just like that. And this is what we're after, guys. If you have this in your hands, you're doing a good job so far. Now that you have your Toyota Prius, God, I just can't stand to say that. Anyways, you have your Prius's steering column. So how we took off the upper portion of the column, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Now you can either A, 
use a hammer to take this off or use an air hammer. I'm choosing an air hammer because it's a whole lot easier. Again, I kind of already took it out a little bit, but there is a snap ring right inside here that you guys better take off because if not, you're gonna damage it. Bingo. All right, you guys, now that you have the upper portion off of the Toyota Prius, this little guy, this little, all this tilt assembly, all this stuff, you are not gonna need this whatsoever. Honestly, you can throw this in the trash, do whatever you want, you don't need this no more. What we're really interested in, this is the lower section of the Toyota Prius. This shaft is what we need next. It should just slide out. <sighs> Kinda like this. So that pretty much wraps up the entire disassembly process. Now just so you guys fully understand what we're doing here, we're taking the bottom portion of the Toyota Prius while keeping the factory upper portion of the 2G DSM. Now obviously we're going to be mating them together and it's going to take quite a bit of work and that's going to be for another video in part two. Now I want to make sure I'm detailed as possible. That's why I want to make a part two, a total video totally dedicated to exactly how we should cut it, the measurements, everything. So if you guys want to check out the next video, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you liked it, and hopefully I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm doing the best I can. I've never done this before. And just so you guys know, there is no write-up on the internet whatsoever. I've searched for days on how to do this. There is nothing whatsoever. So I hope this video is going to help a lot of people maybe want to try to install a Toyota Prius in their GSX. God, that's that just sounds weird, man. <laughs> it's so cool though. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later in the next video. Bye.